Hey Michigan fans, welcome back to the Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. Just wanted to talk a little bit about Michigan. 73-57 to victory over the Indiana Hoosiers today. I gotta just say, this season has been wonderful. I mean, honestly, when your team wins by 16 points and you're kind of like, boy, that was not a great game. Like, man, it was sloppy. Like, the offense wasn't that great. And you go into Indiana. I know it's not quite the same, obviously, without without having fans, at least a full capacity crowd. It's senior day, though. You go in there, and you handle your business and win by 16 points. And all you can see as a fan is, oh, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that. Well, you know what? The team sees that, too. The coaches will. And they're going to uh, uh, address them, work on them, and move forward. What, what a great luxury that is, to win by 16 points and have coaching points on it. A few things that I would have to just start off with. Uh, what a trap game this is. You had Ohio State on Sunday, number three. Number, sorry, number four. You had number nine, Iowa, on Thursday. And now, less than 48 hours later, you go from a night game in Ann Arbor to a noon tip in Indiana. I mean, there's not a lot of time there with the turnaround. And obviously this is because of COVID and they had to reschedule some games, shuffle things, get a little tighter. It is what it is. But you can kind of see that. I would just point out a few things. Michigan just seemed off. And they had turnovers, especially Mike Smith, five turnovers today. That's crazy. And a lot of the turnovers were just, if you will, sloppy, trying to do, like, inbounds plays. They had two inbounds plays that were turnovers. I mean, they're trying to do the lob over the top, like, so the guy's closer to the, the line underneath the basket and throw over to, like, you know, the free throw line or past the three-point line. And they got intercepted two times. Another one, Wagner had to make, like, a you know super catch to get it and keep it away from the defenders. So that's something they'll work on. But five turnovers for Smith. He certainly had an off game uh, passing-wise, but he finished up with double digits in scoring columns. That's nice. Obviously, I also think you might see um, some more tired legs, like the bench. Only one player on the bench hit a shot outside of the scrubs who came in late. The bench shot one out of 11. Shondi Brown hit the one point, with the one basket, a three-pointer. Everyone else... Only one for 11 from the bench. That's just very rare. Brandon Johns didn't get anything. Davis didn't get anything. So the bench just wasn't a factor. But luckily for Michigan, the starters carried the load. Isaiah Livers was on fire to start the second half. Three straight three-pointers he hit. Obviously, Wagner, his last two games, insane. Iowa went 9 for 12 today. He went 6 of 9 for 21 points. Six rebounds, three steals. He got to the free throw line. That was the big disparity in the first half, if you didn't see it. Michigan had 16 of 18 free throws. The only two misses were Davis. Everyone else hit their shots. And that's just great. So, a few things to work on. Inbounds plays, some sloppy turnovers. But the defense, the defense, I looked this up. Again, so, versus Iowa, different offense, don't get me wrong. But Michigan held Iowa to 28 second half points. Today, versus Indiana, held them to 24 second-half points. So Michigan's defense is starting to get its form back a little bit, right? Obviously, Ohio State game, both halves, he gave up like 40 points. So Ohio State, just an offensive juggernaut. So, but two straight halves, second halves, where Michigan held the team to under 30 points. That's really good, 24 and 28. So really good there. So I think the underlooked thing, or overlooked, overlooked thing is Michigan's defense is just so good. They have such long arms, wingspans, Wagner and Brown's energy and Livers and Brooks. They get their hands in the passing lanes all over the place. And then you have Dickinson. Another defensive stat I want to bring up, stat-wise, Jackson Davis, he was averaging 20 points in the Big Ten. Great. What did he get today? 10 points on 3 of 12 shooting. He barely got to double figures to keep his streak going. He had double figures in every game this season. He got 10 points right on the nose on 3 of 12 shooting. He was basically a non-factor. Davis did a great job of just standing him up, and his shots were just looking terrible. I know the Gus Johnson said, like, a, there was another, you know, Johnson Davis with another brick. I think he said it two or three times during the game, a brick. Comparatively, Michigan's defense versus Garza uh, versus Iowa they held him 8 points under his season average, and that was on a three, 6 of 19 shooting for Garza to get his 16 points. So Michigan's defense has been really, really clicking and turning on, really tightening the screws on the best player for
for the team versus Garza, and now today versus Jackson Davis. So defense, defense, defense. Stat-wise, again, Livers, 16 points, 3 of 3 on threes to start the second half. Dickinson, it's like, it's, it's, how crazy is it? It's like a ho-hum game, 13.7 rebounds. And it's like, meh, okay. Th that's how good Dickinson is, where 13 points and 7 rebounds is like, meh. Then you have Wagner, obviously. Just He's just been on fire. And 10 offensive rebounds today. Just They really do such a great job. I mean, <laughs> this is just, like I started off with, this is just crazy that Michigan is this good that you win by 16 points. You're like, meh. It is what it is. It was a trap game, total trap game. And you kind of could feel that as a fan, too. You're hoping you don't get trapped. And the team was kind of just seemed like, seemed to us, to me as a fan, like just going through the motions, if you will. They knew they were better than Indiana, and they won. But you had such a high versus Ohio State, such a high versus Iowa trap game. And now you're looking ahead to Illinois. If Illinois beats Wisconsin, then that game is really, really important. Obviously, so obviously, if Illinois loses today, Michigan wins the Big Ten. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think Illinois is going to win in Wisconsin, and that game for Tuesday will be a very, very big game. <sighs> One other little thought. I, I, I saw at the end of the game, they, they hardly called any fouls in the second half. Michigan only shot one free throw. That was an and one. Finally, they gave it to Wagner. He, like, never gets the and ones, but he finally got one. And But towards the end of the game, there was a turnover by Michigan, true. It was like an inbounds pass. It went out. It didn't work. And then two players fall on Dickinson. How is that not a foul? Two people fell on him. I, why is that not a foul? Couldn't it be a dead ball foul? If you, if you say the ball's out of bounds, how is it not a foul? So now I can just jump on someone and it's not a foul? Because the play's over? I mean, what, what, what was that? Two people fell on him. And it wasn't a foul call. What? 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 I would love to know an official re explanation why that wasn't a foul. <laughs> and only in the Big Ten, man. Only in the Big Ten. You get little tic-tac fouls past the three-point line. Man, two people fall in your center. It's not a foul. Not a foul. <laughs> it is what it is, man. And it's a good day. Michigan wins 73-57. to Setting up a big game versus Illinois on Tuesday. Luckily, Michigan gets Sunday and Monday to rest and prep. It's a home game. So hopefully that can get the team a little bit more rested, get a little bit ready for Illinois, and see how it goes. Hey, until I got... Oh, sorry. Thanks for watching. If you have comments, please put them in the box below. I'll try to respond to them as I can. Thanks for the subscribers again. Really appreciate those. Until I see you guys next time, go blue!